My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Number two, there is a God over this age. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, the Bible says, If our gospel be healed, most of these scriptures you know them. I'm just trying to create a set of truth and understanding in your mind. It says, If our gospel be healed, it is healed to them that are lost, whom the God of this age, whom the God of this age, whom the God, the Almighty God is still sovereign, but He gave this age under the care. Of another God that abused that authority and lost it and so the new God of this age he said his job is to blind the hearts of men so that he can make them a slave to himself so there is a God what does that go to tell you nothing happens by chance everything you see happening is a deliberate orchestration because there is a God monitoring all the events taking place the accident that happened is not by chance. The accident that did not happen is not by chance. The favor you receive is not by chance. The favor you did not receive is not by chance. With the things that happen and the things that don't happen, all of them are orchestrated. And if you want to walk in a certain direction, you have to grow from watching things happen to start making things happen. Because there is a way to live in this age. If you don't live like that, you'll be a victim. The people that died today, they didn't die by chance. And those who are alive today, they are not alive by chance. Everything working under this age is deliberately orchestrated. God created the pattern, but the gods came to manipulate the equation. In John chapter 9 from verse 1, Jesus saw a man that was born blind. And the disciples said, who seen that this man was born blind? And Jesus said, nay. It was not his father, it was not the man. There is another spirit that is controlling and manipulating the affairs of this age. And they said that the glory may go to the father. I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. That means anything you see happening, we make it happen. And the day we stop making things happen, then the will of the wicked spirit of this age will find expression. I'm telling you why. Christians cannot afford to be irresponsible and it's not just enough to be responsible you have to be fruitful positively responsible you cannot just be responsible without fruits every act of responsibility you engage yourself in make sure they are verifiable evidences are we together we are in an evil age there is an evil God ruling this evil age the good news about this evil age is that it will come to an end Matthew 13 verse 49 He says so Shall it be at the end Of this age If this age will not end We would have been in trouble But thank God This age will come to an end You know we are walking through this age But we are not of this age The Bible speaks in Hebrews chapter 6 From verse 4 to 6 He spoke about wielding the power Of the age to come and so there are many men who are walking in this age already. They have stepped out of this age to the next age. They are already operating by another form of power. Those are the true overcomers of this age. Because if you don't touch the power of the age to come, this age will swallow you up. The good news is that this age will come to an end. But the best news is that you don't have to wait for this age to come to an end. While you are yet walking through this age, you can be wielding the powers of the age to come. And as I show you the operations of the spirit of this age, I will also show you what you need to do. That while you are yet walking in this age, you are wielding the power of the ages to come. That is what makes you an overcomer. You are not an overcomer just because you are a Christian. You are an overcomer because you have known what to do 
to touch the powers of the ages to come. There are many people, their lives are flamboyant today. Give it time. If you have not touched those powers, anything happening to you today can be edited. And it can be edited negatively. But if you don't want your life to be edited negatively, there must be something you carry. And so when they want to touch, you say, no, it's not your time. You know why? Because regulation of time in this age is not in heaven, it's in the church. It's not in heaven. The Bible said in Galatians 4.1 that the heir, so long as he's a child, is not different from a servant, even though he's the Lord of law. He said, so the father appointed tutors and governors. That means the time the child comes to maturity, that is the time the change will happen. So if the child wants to provoke the change early, he aligns early. If he aligns late, the change comes late. If he aligns early, the change comes early. But as touching the culminative end of the age is a function of the corporate body of Christ. And what will bring the age to an end? Matthew 24 verse 14. He said this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world as a witness. Then the end shall come. Three things about the age. It's an evil age. Number two, there is an evil God that rules this evil age. Number three, this evil age will come to an end. And number four, the church will determine when this age will come to an end. When the church is able to preach the gospel of the kingdom, they will completely immobilize the power of the God of this age and this age will cease to exist. Are you seeing that? So you are in an evil age. There is an evil God mapping out everything you are doing, trying to influence you, trying to change the outcomes of your life. You can stop the operation of that God if you know what to do. And so tonight, the reason we are doing this Bible study is to find out what the spirits of the age do and then to know what to do to stop their effect and to triumph while we are yet living in this age until the time of the age to come this has nothing to do with africa many people think there are demons in africa there are more demons in europe than they are in africa travel to europe and you will see that they level everything happening there is on a higher scale than is happening in africa you just see wickedness people die and you see poverty and you think that's all those are the least things in the in the operations of darkness when you see the level of moral decadence in certain european nations you will find out if these people are really humans the level of evil concupiscence the level of sensuality you are strolling in a park people are having sex i mean you wonder whether they can even animals can contain themselves that's the level of darkness it is so bad that you are not even permitted to say the truth if you say it they can arrest you there are many quarters where if you preach they call it intolerance because they they don't want to tamper with the evil conscience of society they think this thing you are saying we make people wake up to truth and so they will bundle you to jail for trying to get people to think morally and so even in your church they can shut your church down because a gay person stood up and said you will say something that looked as if you were attacking him and they will shut a church down because of one person that is the level you don't know what is happening in the world there is evil this is an evil age this age you are in it's an evil age and if you don't realize it it will swallow you up you will think you are looking for a job that job is a grave because when the gods of this world handle you by the time you are old and resign from that job thinking you have achieved all you have achieved you will now discover that all your life you were a servant of another spirit then you will discover that what you call the job it wasn't even god that gave you it was a spirit that knew the, the only way to manage you is through your ego. So he gave you a job that will massage your ego. And he used your ego to enslave you for a lifetime. 
until you realize it you won't know what to do to be sane while you are on your job high level demonic intelligence going on in the world you may think you are you are you are you are zealous about succeeding when these spirits come they will set up anxiety in your soul and that anxiety will keep you awake all night you think it's hard work by the time they finish manipulating and remodeling you your anxiety will lead you to do anything to succeed and at the end of the day you will think you have a, a zeal for success no it's not passion for success they have actually enslaved you and when you get what you call success you will now discover you can't stand for anything anymore because you have crushed the threshold you can do anything now to succeed and so you have become a puppet of success and so anytime they want to tamper with you they present something to you you will call it new heights but they are not new heights they are actually new chains but if you don't know the spirit of this age you will not understand you will say me i have i have i know I, I have this thing for success no 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 i accept challenges if there's a challenge it has nothing to do with challenge you have been remodeled and so you will not know the difference between rest and zeal you will not know the difference between rest and passion passion that is motivated by god you will find yourself pursuing everything and anything sometimes it's just out of competition and then you will not know what your soul becomes like you are you are bastardized this is why you need to understand the oppression of the spirit of the age paul said we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy we are not ignorant i know i want to excel in ministry but i also know the difference between passion for god and ambition for fame and power i know i want to excel in business but I know the difference between a quest to make impact and the desire to show that I'm better than everybody. Those things are thin lines. And when the spirit of the age comes, he will give you everything God can give you. But at the end of the day, you will lose your soul. And when Jesus sat down and summarized it, he said, what shall he profit a man? If he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his soul. This is what many are not aware of most of us pursuing the same thing most of us have the same result but at the end of the day we arrive there as different individuals we started as christians some we arrive as christians others we arrive as sons of belia others we arrive as thieves and rogues others we arrive as men without a conscience because they gave up something before they came there it is an operation of the spirit of the age There are seven operations of the spirit of the age that I want to speak about tonight. And I'll take it one at a time. The first operation of the spirit of the age is deception. The second operation of the spirit of the age is self-preservation. You will find out that at the root of human action you will trace and discover at least one or two of these things are there what motivates the actions of men trace it to the root if it is not god you will find one of these things deception self-preservation number three ungodliness there are many people who are outrightly out against god that's what powers their pursuit to discredit hope you know before paul had encounters with god he was highly ungodly he wanted everything that would destroy the memory of jesus christ that's what powers the, the zeal of many people number four evil and wickedness share wickedness you will find somebody pursuing somebody pursuing something aggressively and when you find out why he's doing what he's doing with so much passion it is just out of wickedness there is somebody that must not succeed as far as he's breathing and that's why he's doing what he's doing and you will be shocked the way wickedness can push people and you will be amazed somebody is doing something with so much energy at the root is wickedness number four is pleasure number five 
pleasure and carnality you see the magnitude of pleasure somebody sits down thinks and invents something what power did his pleasure there's a degree of pleasure he wants to have and because of this pleasure he can activate a depth of ingenuity that will overwhelm you it's pleasure that motivates it and you are wondering can pleasure provoke wisdom yes can pleasure provoke passion to succeed yes most people the reason they are running through life helter skelter is because they want to amass some level of wealth and when they are done they will live all their lives in plenty the rich fool said i've gathered my barn now it is full what is left for me is to rest and enjoy myself and they looked at him from heaven they say you fool that means the reason you are walking under the sun and under the rain is to come to a point where you will enter the frequency of pleasure non-stop these are the things that post that power men and you'll be amazed how come how how what has this spirit have these spirits done to us that degenerate our soul structure so much somebody is laboring night and day is not to make positive impact it's just for pleasure it's the spirit of the age it's an operation of the spirit of the age what number is that number number five number six is quest for power nothing has driven men in this world like quest for power just to be in charge somebody said everything a man does is to attain power you see somebody with wealth the wealth is not what moves him what moves him is the fact that when he shows up everybody should submit and because of that he can do anything some of the cars people buy it's not because they love them but if they don't arrive in those cars you will take them for granted and so one man is coming not because there is any security threat but he has to come with eight vehicles and all of them are black tinted glass SUVs and they are the latest Lexus so when he shows up they are, there's a siren in front there's a siren in back at the back there's no threat to, there's no security issue but if he doesn't come like that Kai. so that man is buying car it's not because he loves cars that car is what makes him feel in charge some people will buy a business class ticket it's not because of <laughs> if you know what the quest for power has done to people you'll be amazed and that's why many times when any spirit wants to negotiate with a man most times the first point of bargain is power because they know you can hardly find a man that can say no to power that's the most difficult thing to reject in this life power forget it when people stand up and tell you they are not interested in power <laughs> is a lie very few men have been able to conquer the desire for power and when power is given to such men they empower others not themselves very few have gotten there it's an operation of the spirit of the age and finally is insecurity people are uncertainty uncertainty is what makes many people take the decisions they take they are careful they don't know what tomorrow holds it's a sign of faithlessness you'll find people take actions it's out of uncertainty they are too afraid of tomorrow that they will die today it's what the spirit of this age does to men there are just seven i want to highlight there are many but for the purpose of this lecture i talk about these three remember the foundation of all of this is what evil because this is an evil age the god of this age is an evil god and what he wants to achieve is what evil if you know this it will deliver you from a lot of unnecessary things so let's begin with deception There are three major provokers of deception that the spirit of the age deploys. Number one, from demonic spirits. 
when the spirit of the age wants to activate deception there are three major channels he uses number one they are demonic spirits deception does not just happen they are sponsors of deception and so i will show you the sponsors of deception and i will show you the tools that are used for deception and then i'll show you what to do in order to live above deception praise god so the first sponsors of deception that the spirit of the age deploys are evil spirits in revelation chapter 12 verse 9 the bible said and the great dragon was cast out the old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world so when you find people walking in deception there is a spirit sponsoring it and one of the things that have affected the body of christ the most is the operation of deception in fact today is difficult to speak truth because of the level of deception that we are in many times you attempt to speak the truth you are crucified before you start because deception has been enthroned it is now the order of the day go to certain places and there talk about morality and see what happens to you for 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 mentioning it because everybody that has become the standard of the people there and so you cannot dare take a stand against against immorality you will see the way they will fight you including the people who are not immoral the fear you are trying i was shocked when i heard the american president address the nation and he said this is a bad day for america what was the bad day abortion was abolished it was a bad day that abortion was abolished and the president of a nation a nation that was once built on morality will stand up and call it a bad day why is it so he said the ideology of america america is to fight for the interest of americans and because most americans want abortion it doesn't matter whether it is morally right or wrong as far as it's concerned it's a bad day it took years of battling to achieve that but when deception has been enthroned when good happens it becomes a bad day go to certain parastatus in nigeria and try to speak against bribery and corruption and see what happens to you the first thing they will do to you is that they will remove your file and hide it for 10 years you will not be promoted you are you have been promoted too fast that's why you think you can talk and when they hide the file they will take you to a village where there's no light stay in that village and serve for five years when you are done serving without electricity then they will ask you after five years what were you saying five years ago you will now apologize and say no i was a child because <laughs> you don't know the battle we are fighting maybe most of us are students so we don't know what is happening why do you think many things cannot work try to speak and say light will be stable in this country and see who comes after you you think the mechano james that are coming into the country is not somebody that is that is not somebody's business as far as they are concerned for you to stop their business is better this country is in total blackout it doesn't matter how many businesses cannot start because they don't have enough power for production as far as it's concerned the Mikano J must keep coming to Nigeria because that's where he gets his money from. And he has no concern what happened in the country, happens in the country. When deception is enthroned, to advocate truth becomes a, a stand for war. Because when you start, you'll be a victim. And everybody will rise up against you, including your family. That's when you will discover those who are benefiting from it. You will be shocked that the people they will send to you first are your family members. And they will ask you, what do you think you want to do? is an oppression of the spirit of the age and it has affected every strata of our economy go to the universities today and find out how many people come to the exams without leakage find out if you read and you are intelligent you have become a victim for being intelligent if they come to the exam hall and you don't allow them copy is a problem 
And I'm not saying something that unbelievers do. I'm talking what happens among pastors of fellowship. You will see fellowship president sweating. What is he doing? He's copying from somebody's answer script. And when he's done copying, he will show up in the evening and say it's miracle service. <laughs> Deception has been enthroned. I'm telling you, that's why, you know, Jesus said, we were taught from scriptures in John 16, 33. He said, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And because he overcame the world, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, he said, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. That means he has the potential to overcome the world. But when you get to the book of Revelation, they didn't award Christians. There's no reward for a Christian. There's only reward for overcomers. Those who have lived above the oppression of the spirit of the age. You can be a Christian for 90 years, there will be no reward for you. Because there's no reward in heaven for Christians. There are only reward for overcomers. And for you to overcome, you must defy the oppression of the spirit of the age. That's why Jesus said, the prince of this world come to me and find them nothing. There's too much deception. We have not won the battle over deception. And the first agents of deception are demons and the devil himself. I showed you already from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from chapter 4 verse 3. He said, people are deceived because what the spirits do is to blind their eyes. And some people can no longer distinguish between good and evil. Some people can no longer tell what is truth from what is a lie. And so they just operate based on what they feel. And so long as they feel good about it. Sometimes when you watch reality TVs, you'll be amazed. Or you watch some of these talk shows or evening hangouts, you'll just be amazed. A lady showed up the other day, I stumbled on a program, and she, a lady who is a trained medical doctor, told the father that um, she feels like she needs more money. And so what she wants to do is um, to quit the medical profession and become a stripper. And this is a world where deception is so enthroned that if you, if you are a parent, be careful. Because if you attempt to correct your child the way of scripture, you may end up behind bars. The Bible says foolishness is bound to the heart of a child. It said the rod of correction will drive it out. Those days when I was a teacher in secondary school, that was what they, every student knew me with that scripture. Foolishness. When you err immediately, your classmates will just say, foolishness is bound, is bound to the heart of a child. But if you use the rod of correction in America, the prison will also correct you. The father begged his, begged his daughter and there was nothing he could do about it. So they had to come to an agreement that when she's 40, she will stop. You can't, you can't say anything. If you try it, you are in trouble. Even you who is the father, that's called deception. It has taken over the system. If you want to raise a child in certain nations now, you need God to encounter you and give you strategy. I'm not saying, forget I'm calling one or two nations, it's just coming spontaneously. It's happening everywhere in the world. If you don't know these things and prepare yourself, your Christianity will last for two hours after you give your heart to Christ. Because if you are not careful, the person that led you to Christ will rape you. And then you, are, you, you, you now say, wait, what happened? I thought I gave my heart to Christ. The person that led you to Christ will rape you. Because he's just waiting for you to lower your guard. The moment you lower your guard, the preacher will preach two gospels in one day. The one that Paul say, you are cursed. You are, even if we are an angel, you are cursed. Deception. That's what's really and they are sponsored by spirits. They are not normal. When you see people deceived, don't just come and start arguing with them and say, how can you not know this simple thing? They are blinded. That's why we intercede heavily before we do anything in this kingdom. Because people are not, you think logic is, you, even you didn't understand it by logic. It took the unveiling of the spirit for you to understand it. And so when you find people walking in error, don't be offended. Pity them. They are slaves. And they are slaves of deception. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. 
if um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.